Hi guys, welcome to British Lit 2, English 242. This is um, a quick session summer class. It's eight weeks. Um, the purpose of this video is just to kind of go through the syllabus. I'm going to try and go through it as quickly as possible, although usually I'm long-winded in syllabus videos. What I will say up front is if you plan to just read the syllabus from the beginning to the end on your own, then you do not need to watch this video. Um, and this video is also going to cover really all of, I think, the essential policies. So um, if you do watch the video, you are likely to have enough information so as to not be penalized for like various policies throughout the course. So. Um, up to you. You don't have to watch this, but if you're not going to read the syllabus, you should definitely watch this video. All right. Um, course is three credit hours. We're using Blackboard now instead of Moodle. So if you've taken um, this course, or if you've taken any classes with Mitchell previously, uh, we're looking at a new system, and I know that might take a, a little bit of time, although it's it's mostly the same um, to navigate. So, you know, if you have questions about that, let me know. Uh, I'm not on campus over the summer except for periodically, so I really don't have any official office hours. I definitely don't recommend calling my office phone because I'm probably not going to be there when you call me. Um, but I can meet with you at any point if you want. Um, just send me an email and we can, we can set up a time to meet. I, I'm really happy to do that. I have a lot of free time, but I don't have to be here, so I'm not going to. Um, you can find other contact information in the syllabus or at various places in the getting started section of Moodle. Um, really, to be the most successful in this course, and you guys have probably noticed I'm going to skip some stuff here, um, log into Blackboard every day, um, make an appointment with me if you have questions about something, uh, or, you know, don't even have to make an appointment. You can email me a thousand questions. I, I really enjoy responding to questions via email. Um, you kind of, you know, students who are most successful do all the activities and look at all the stuff, even if I'm not really giving you a grade for it. Um, really what's most important is the minute you get your book, the minute you get your assignment, the minute you get your reading, you start reading, you start prepping. Um, procrastination in this class will just make you want to cry. And I say that from experience. So obviously I was an English major as an undergrad and I have had, um, you know, classes where I have to read an entire book in a week, every week, for 16 weeks. Um, every time I procrastinated, I regretted it. Is it a hard habit to break? Yes, 100%. Have I even really broken that habit? No, I don't think so. But, um, you know, keep that in mind. Read when you have the opportunity. If you are doing a lot of driving, then maybe listen more than you read. Although, I don't think that that's a... 100% substitute. Um, you should have some MLA knowledge by this point. If you don't, there's supplemental information on um, Blackboard. You should have some knowledge about at least writing about literature or film or something like that. It's kind of integrated. So if you've, if you've done any writing about some text, whether that's a movie text or a TV text or a written text, you, sh you should be good. Um, maybe you might have to brush up on your how to cite poetry. Um, you'll definitely need some critical thinking for this class. This class isn't just summarize what you read. It's apply what you read, think about what you read, apply it to history, apply it to today, apply it to the psyche or your life, apply one text to another text. So um, there's a lot of critical thinking required. You guys can log in and read the SLOs if you want. They're in the syllabus and then they're also um, in a page in Blackboard. So really, one of the most important things is, um, like, what are the textbooks that you're going to need? And our primary textbook is an anthology. Um, it is the Norton Anthology of English Literature. It's the major author version, which is a little bit cheaper than the one that has more than just the major authors. Um, it's the ninth edition. It's volume two. It looks like this. And if you cannot see this screen for whatever reason, it's sort of a, a reddish colored book with a picture of four women angels 
on the cover. I'm sure that's a really important painting that I don't know anything about. Um, the other book that is required is um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now, you do not have to go out and purchase a copy if you don't already own one. I have rented 15 copies from our library, so I have a class set. There's only 11 of you in this course, so that should cover everybody. The hardest challenge is just getting the book. So I have them personally in my office. Um, and if you don't want to buy a copy yourself and you want to grab one from me, that's fine. You just have to make an ap appointment with me um, before we start reading the book so that you can you know, get it in an adequate manner and time frame. Um, we will read the book, Harry Potter, in um, week seven. So that's toward the end of July. I would say shoot for trying to get that book as early as possible, but you know, the right around the beginning of July or the early middle of July, you should have enough time um, to get it and, and we should be able to figure that out. So um, ch just try to email me by July 1st, if not sooner, to make an appointment to get the book. I'm going out of town a couple of times, so there, there may be, you know, just give me plenty of time to, to meet up with you. Um, Yes, you can buy your own copy, that's fine. Um, there's probably Amazon has them for like less than 10 bucks used or something like that. Um, also, uh, the Norton Anthology of English Lit, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it through Barnes & Noble. I think it's pretty cheap. I think you can rent it for like 20 bucks. You can buy it super used for a couple dollars. Um, just be, be aware of when you're purchasing your book because within the first week of class you're going to have content um, that requires you to use the book and, and quiz yourself on it. So um, that's a, you know, a major portion of your grade comes from the book, so you're going to have to have it right away. Um, and if that means you have to get it from the bookstore, I would go that route. Um, or, you know, you use your Amazon Prime. Can you do a free trial of that? I don't know. Does your mom have Amazon Prime? Anyway, um, you're, obviously this is an online class, so you're going to have to use the computer. Uh, I'm going to skip some of this stuff. So we're going to have quizzes, we're going to have discussion boards, we're going to have responses, we're going to write two papers. You have to do a mandatory enrollment <laughs> activity and you get 10 points. Um, there's only three quizzes. They're based on the unit chapter content, so that's the stuff that comes straight out of the book. Some of the earlier writings that we're going to read in the first half of the class you can find on the internet. Um, some of them I'll link directly from the internet because they're not in the book, but I want you to read them anyway. Um, and But the, the unit quizzes is really kind of on some of the historical and thematic contexts and not so much on the texts themselves. So keep that in mind um, as you're kind of preparing for the quizzes. Each reading section for the unit quizzes is about 25 pages and it gets kind of heavy. Um, <clears throat> we'll have discussion boards. We'll have six total discussion boards. So the weeks that we have papers do, you won't have any discussion boards, but it'll be kind of like a Q&A style discussion board and a lot of freedom, um, but just really looking for uh, thoughtful responses in your discussion boards. They're worth uh, 40 points each. And you really don't want to miss them either. So we're also going to have smaller responses, and these are really unique and tailored to one particular reading or something that you're working on for your paper um, and they'll those will be due on Wednesdays so quizzes and discussion boards due Sundays responses due on Wednesdays and then we're gonna have two papers uh, one will be more of a close read paper another one will be more of a thematic connection between at least three of the texts throughout the semester um, and they'll be due in week four and week eight 200 points each due on due on a Sunday Mandatory enrollment activity is something that you have to do to remain enrolled in the course, so you might actually be able to watch this video without having done the mandatory enrollment activity, but you want to make sure that you do it before June 6th because otherwise you will be dropped from the class. Um, so I think for the most part I've covered some of these optional statements. Just be aware, I only accept file types of like doc, docx, or pdf. Other things I don't take for a number of reasons. Either I can't download them or I don't know when you've edited them and sometimes like for example if you give me a link to your google doc you could currently be editing it after the deadline um, but maybe I don't go in and read it until seven days after you submitted it or something like that and then um, you've had extra time. So that for me is problematic, which is why I don't accept Google Drive links anymore. Um, 
you can download your your document as like a PDF then if you're using Google Drive. I use Google Drive for pretty much everything so it's easy. Just go to file, download as, PDF, doc, whatever. Um, don't send me anything via email unless we've already agreed upon that. The, the reason for this is I've started to just get a lot of students missing their deadlines and saying, oh, I'll just email it to her. Um, and I feel like that abuses um, my time and I feel like that abuses um, uh, my sanity, <laughs> maybe, or just my niceness and it's frustrating. So I'm not um, going to accept any assignments via email anymore unless I tell you to email it to me, which I might do. But, um, you know, unless you hear it from my email, don't email me. Um, also, just be careful of the files that you're submitting. Um, when you submit your work, download it again and make sure that you've submitted the right file. I have had so many students in the past get zeros for submitting a corrupted file, um, for submitting the wrong assignment, for submitting the assignment sheet but not the actual assignment. So just be careful of that. Um, I also have a, a rewrite policy in this class so let's say you write your paper and I look at it and I'm like this is not really what I asked you to do um, I'll notify you that you have the option to either take a zero or rewrite the paper for a 10% point deduction so if it was you know if you had scored an A 100% originally um, then you could get a, a 90% for example, um, I'll notify you and then one week from the notification email being sent, you'll have to rewrite the paper and turn it in. And that is just a, that's just a short turnover time because um, it's a short semester. Sorry, my phone rang. <laughs> now I'm confused. Okay. Um, just know that technology errors and things like that can happen and try to be mindful of having backups and making sure your computer is charged and you have internet and things like that. So I don't accept missed work. What I mean by that is, let's say you went on vacation and you forgot to do a quiz and you didn't email me and you come back and you see that you got a zero on it. That's an example of you missed an assignment. So no communication, no can I have an extension, nothing like that, you just missed it. At that point, it's a zero. There's nothing more that I will do, you just missed the work and I don't take missed work. Um, sometimes people like to email me at the end of the semester. I have a C, I really wanted to be in this class, what can I do to bring up my grade? And they might even offer a suggestion of, I noticed I have a zero on this quiz, can I take it? Or I never turned in this response, can I turn it in, it's just a couple points, blah blah blah. Nope, can't do that. Um, so don't even try that with me. Late work, so I do take late work without any kind of communication, <laughs> which is confusing, right? Because I'm like, well, you just said you don't take missed work. I will give everyone 24 hours to turn in any assignment, and to me that's late work. So let's say an assignment was due at Sunday, 11.59 p.m., and you didn't turn it in. You have 24 hours to get it turned in, and it's late, and it's fine. There's no point deduction for late work. You just have 24 hours. It's like an automatic extension. You don't even have to email me and ask, can you turn it in late? Um, you don't have to do anything at all. Just turn it in. Blackboard is going to handle all that stuff because what I do is I set, here's the due date and students have until this date to turn it in. So you'll always have, if an assignment is due on Wednesday, you will always have until Thursday at 11.59 p.m. to turn it in. If an assignment is due on Sunday, you will always have until Monday at 11.59 p.m. automatically. You don't have to contact me. You don't have to tell me why you turn, you know, why, what's going on. Just turn it in. If after that I don't hear from you and you don't turn it in, it's a missed assignment and it gets a zero. That, it, um, there's one other thing in class, I guess, regarding missed work, extent, late work, things like that, and that's extensions. So in English 242, you can request up to two extensions over the course of the semester. And you can get extensions for anything. You can get extensions for a quiz. You can get extensions for um, a response, for a discussion board. You can get extensions for a major paper. 
you can ask for an extension for up to three additional days. So that is three additional days added on to the late work policy, 24 hours. So let's say an assignment is due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. You automatically have until Monday at 11.59 p.m. to turn it in. And if you email me before then and ask for an extension, then I will give you three more days or 72 hours on top of that Monday deadline. So that means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you have, if an assignment is due on Sunday and you ask for an extension, you have until Thursday to turn it in. Does that make sense? Because that's like your automatic Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three more days. So you have until, where is that? Thursday to turn that in. Um, you can only request extensions for two assignments though, so use them wisely and use them only for reasons that are important. Here's the thing, I don't actually want to know why you need an extension because I don't want to have to um, consider anything like is this important or not. You can get an extension for really really important and valid reasons like deaths, um, hospitalization, you know, children, family, things like that, emergencies, and you can get extensions for really terrible reasons, like you procrastinated, or you went on vacation, or um, your boss made you work, which isn't terrible, but you have a terrible boss. Um, so, but I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Especially don't say anything like, I've been working on other classes more than yours, so I need an extension. Please don't say that. That makes me mad. <laughs> and I don't want to be mad at you. So just don't even tell me why you need an extension. Um, if you've used up your two extensions and you need extra extensions, that is when I need to know why you need extra extensions. Um, and so, you know, you may or may not get them, so use your extensions wisely. If you procrastinate on a quiz and you don't get the quiz turned in, that's not the end of, a, end of the world. But if you have an open extension and you're not going to be able to get a paper turned in, you should use one of your extensions. Again, for any reason. Um, <clears throat> all of your assignments will be done in MLA format. I will try to give you guys feedback as quickly as possible, especially because this is a short semester. Um, two to four days for small things, seven days for bigger things, sometimes up to ten days for the papers, especially if I'm, I've got like a million papers getting turned in at the same time. Um, my syllabus has attendance information, mostly because it has to be here, but I don't really think it applies to anyone in the class, so I'm going to skip it. Um, we've talked about this already and this. Withdrawal policy, if you are not a high school student, then you can withdraw from the class. I guess technically if you are a high school student, you can withdraw from the class, but um, most people encourage you not to. Um, if you decide that at any point you don't think you're going to be successful in this course then you have to email the registrar to withdraw and if you need help doing that I can help you I can show you you know the email for that I think the last day you'll be able to do that is July 16th so um, you know if it's July 15th and you're like yeah I'm not gonna pass this class then I would just go ahead and withdraw because um, a W is so much better than an F an F can affect your financial aid an F can will negatively affect your GPA but a W will not do either of those things so um, you know keep keep that in mind if at any point in the semester I email you and say it's appears as if you're not going to pass this class. Believe me when I say that. <laughs> um, I think pretty much everything else is stuff you can go through yourself with the exception of academic honesty. So academic honesty is basically plagiarism. Um, in this class, if I believe that you have intentionally plagiarized, I will report you to the vice president of student services pretty much every, once a year someone plagiarizes something and I catch them. Um, you get a zero for your assignment, you will likely fail the course, and you will have to meet with the VP of Student Services for a conduct meeting, so don't plagiarize. This class is especially easy to plagiarize in because a lot of the texts that we're reading people have written about before. Um, and sometimes you get to a point where like, I don't know what to say, I the deadline's coming up, I don't want to get a zero. Um, 
I'm just gonna copy some stuff from the internet or my roommate's paper that she wrote three years ago or something like that. Please don't do that. If that's where you're at, if you feel that that's what's happening, I would say withdrawing from the course at that point is so much better than plagiarizing. Um, send me an email. You know, if you have extensions left, send me an email and ask for an extension and let me know that you're struggling because you're not in this alone. I'm your teacher. I'm here to help you. But I will not have any sympathy for you if you intentionally plagiarize and all the things. You get a zero, fail a class, get reported to the VP of Student Services. So don't do it. Um, pretty much everything else. It's good. There's a tentative course schedule in uh, Moodle. Oh, it's not Moodle anymore. It's Blackboard. Um, there's also a tentative course schedule linked here in the syllabus. And <clears throat> um, it just kind of goes through like what period we're covering. Go away. What period we're covering, the weeks in which we're covering that, what texts I want you to read the, in during those weeks how many pages you're looking at. I, that was always something I really liked to know in college, is how many pages do I have to read? Um, what's due when? And then what's due when? So what's due on Wednesday, what's due on Sunday? Um, sometimes I'll link you to a supplemental readings that you can't find in your textbook. Um, and yeah, otherwise, eventually at some point you'll see links to what the paper assignments are once I really kind of delve into those and put them up in Blackboard. Um, but I think at this point this covers everything. So what I want you to do now is go back into Blackboard and find where it says Syllabus Acknowledgement Agreement and just click yes. You know, it'll say something like click yes to say you either watched the video or you read through the syllabus. Um, if you feel like there's things that you wanted to know that are on the syllabus that I didn't cover in this video, then you should definitely go read the syllabus. But I think this video covers all of your basis and basis is ter in terms of like where you could potentially get in trouble or lose points. And I think that's really kind of the most important thing. So um, if you have questions after you watch this video and review the syllabus on your own, please email me. My email is always available to you. I will respond as quickly as I can. I definitely don't want anyone to be he hesitant at all to say, you know, I'm worried about emailing her. I have a question, but I'm not really sure. Is, is she one of those teachers that like it's mad at you for emailing. No, never, not at all. So please um, send me an email if you have a question. Otherwise, I hope that you enjoy the course. Um, and I look forward to engaging with your reading and things like that.